With the snowing outside of the window now, Brother Fa was stunned, and decided to take a look at some of the company offices. Because of the new year, Brother Fa had released all the people in the company early, and the whole company showed the loneliness and depression of people leaving the building. All the spaces were gathered, magnified the emptiness in Brother Fa's chest. Brother Fa returned to his big desk, picked up his handheld phone, opened it, and sat down to play with his phone. This damn mobile phone kept ringing a few days ago, and there were deaths, deaths, and deaths everywhere, and money, money, and money everywhere. Brother Fa shut it down with anger. The office turned to be quiet, and no creditor could have expected that. Brother Fa locked himself in the office when the New Year was coming. Brother Fa held the phone in his hand, extremely empty, but hoped that it could ring, even if it was the creditor. However, this is how businessmen's year-end phone calls are: the coming ones are not missed, but the missing ones are not coming. Brother Fa had to call his handheld phone with the phone on the desk. And then called the one on the desk with his handheld phone. After making two or three rounds of calls like this, Brother Fa himself was bored, and he just clicked a series of numbers on the handheld phone. After hearing a few sounds, the phone was surprisingly connected. Who? Sat on the phone. Brother Fa's brain boomed. He accidentally dialed his ex-wife's house. Brother Fa was about to turn it off, but his ex-wife was talking on the phone again. Who? Brother Fa's head was turned as if his ex-wife was walking by in front of him, and she almost saw him. Brother Fa hurriedly said, "It's me." Then there was no voice on the phone. Brother Fa knew that his ex-wife had already heard it, so he had to repeat. It's me, I know. It's snowing, Brother Fa said. I can see it. There was no sound on the phone again. Brother Fa bit the inside of his lower lip, not knowing what to say. Brother Fa said in a panic, "Let's have a meal together." As soon as he said this, Brother Fa regretted it. Have a meal has now become Brother Fa's catchphrase and a synonym for goodbye. Brother Fa never said goodbye when sending people, but said, "Okay, okay, have a meal together sometime." After a long time, the ex-wife finally said, "I'm busy at home." Come on," said Brother Fa. "I know you are alone. Let's have a meal together." I don't want to see you. You can lower your head and eat. I don't want to eat your food. Let's split it. What are you going to do? It's New Year's Eve. It's snowing. Let's have a meal together. His ex-wife stopped talking at all. Then the silence on the phone had the dual nature of hesitation and acquiescence. It was like this when they were in love. Then, Brother Far called, but the ex-wife refused. Brother Fa called again, and the ex-wife half refused and half accepted. Brother Fa was preserving, and then the ex-wife stopped talking any more. Whatever the ex-wife does, she marks her basic wishes with her beautiful static. Brother Fa hoped that his ex-wife throws away the phone initially, but nope, and she did not speak. Brother Fa had to crawl to the end, or it would be too ugly. Brother Fa said, "My car will be waiting for you downstairs after half an hour. Don't let me wait too long. I don't want the neighbors to see me." After saying this, Brother Fa threw his phone away on the desk. He stood up and lit a cigarette again, took a deep sip, and sipped it all the way to the heel. What was that? What do you think it was? Brother Fa scratched his head, and the heavy snow in the sky became flying and disturbing human handwriting.